students, I'm Anshul Sharma, your educator for paper one. So we have been discussing PYQs related to environment topic and today as well we will be discussing the PYQs but basically we are going to focus on the remaining SDG goals, right? So in the previous video, we discussed I believe till goal 8th. So I would repeat again the uh, goals that we have but in greater detail we'll start with goal number 9. Okay, so the first goal that we have and first of all, what do you mean by SDGs? These are the sustainable development goals, right? So what is sustainable development? Sustainable development is using the resources in such a manner that you leave them for the future generation. So Brutland report came and after that also we started talking about sustainable development a lot. And hence in 2015, we started with all these goals. So initially from 2020, uh, from 2000 to 2015, we had the MDG goals, that is the Millennium Development Goals. And then after they were finished, we started with the Sustainable Development Goals, which talk in greater detail about using the resources in a proper manner. Right, so this was the basic crux. We have 17 SDG and we have 169 targets. So we have been discussing these SDGs. Now let us start. So the first SDG that we have is no poverty, then zero hunger. So we can remember like this that we are here in our country and we know that one of the major problem in our country is that there is a lot of poverty. So we decided that we have to end the poverty. Then we decided that there should be no one who is hungry. If we end poverty, if no one is below the poverty line then they will have at least something to eat and feed their family as well so that means we'll be working on zero hunger then after all of these two things are done we know that good health is of up, at, uh, you know utmost importance and we believe that if the person is sound then only they can be educated so a sound mind can only reside in a sound body so we know that we have to work on the body so we decided that there should be good health and well-being then we saw that yes, now we are healthy, now we can study, now we should talk about the equality for education and this quality of education and give, and this education should be given to everyone. So girls, boys and rich, poor, everyone should be given education. At this time, we are not only talking about the primary education, but the secondary, tertiary, vocationalization, all of these things also started. So in NEP 2020, we are basically focusing on the goal number four only. So this becomes important in two ways. It can be asked, merged with your NEP 2020 plus as a goal itself, it becomes important because we, of course, are believing that education can change the mindset of everyone. Then we have gender equality that none of us is, uh, you know, more or better or less, you know, uh, whatever we are uh, and whatever we do, we are always equal. So girls and boys are equal. So this is this goal that we have gender equality. Then we have clean water and sanitation. So in MDG, we discussed that there was only clean water in which about which we were talking. But here we are also talking about sanitation. So there should be good sanitation. Even the slum areas should be good. Then we discussed about the clean energy, affordable and clean energy. And then we discussed about the decent work. So we know that after getting good quality education, we won't discriminate between the girls and the boys. Then when we are studying, we would require, imagine that you are in school and you are at your school and you know that when you are studying, you'll feel hungry or you'll feel thirsty. So this means that there should be clean water and good washrooms to go to at least in your schools. School premises should be neat and tight. So, this means that there should be clean water and sanitation. Then of course, when you are studying, you need electricity to study in the school. This means that there should be affordable and clean energy. Then when you will study, what will happen? There will be economic growth. So you will be given decent works and economic growth. There would be job creation done. After that, industries would be set up. So when you are studying, you know that there are decent jobs outside there. Then you will, good, uh, you will work better and you will get jobs related to this innovation sector, infrastructure and industries. Then after you have done this, what will happen? When there will be less of gap between the rich and the poor. So there will be reduced inequalities between the rich and the poor. Digital divide or the gap between the rich and the poor, urban and the rural would actually 
reduce. Then we have after following this, when the gap between the rich and poor is reduced, then we have good cities to live. Then we have decent places to live. So we have sustainable cities and good communities to live in. Then what will happen if you are living in a good area, you will definitely want that none of us is sleeping without food. We have a good proportion of food available. We can export import that food also. So we'll be working on the responsible consumption and production. We'll produce more so that we can carry forward the export and import businesses, right? So then what will happen after we have decided that yes, we have ample food, we are educated, we are working. Now let us think about our mother earth. What we will be doing? We'll take climate actions and in climate actions, first of all, we'll look at the marine life and then we'll look at the terrestrial life. So life below water and then life on land. Remember 14 and 15th goal. And at the end, we'll know that there would be peace and harmony. And if there is peace and harmony, then global partnerships are possible, right? So we, I hope you already are you know revising all these things now let us start with goal number 19 and goal number 9 and let us look at the targets also so goal 9 says build resilient infrastructure promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation so carry forward all of the enterprises that involve the innovation sector and foster sustainable innovation sector and industrialization so that more and more people can come up so develop quality reliable sustainable resilience infrastructure including the regional and trans uh, boundary infrastructure promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization by 2030. So basically work on the small scale industrial sector and the large scale industrial sector also. So increase the access to the small scale industrial sector and other enterprises. By 2030, upgrade the infrastructure work on the infrastructure, have good machinery, work on innovation, right? So don't be left behind as compared to the other developed countries. Then work on the other industry sector. Also enhance scientific research also. You work on the scientific research so that more and more innovation is possible. So scientific research, upgrade your technological capability of industrial sector and other communities. And this in particular in developing countries is very important. 2030. So basically what they are talking, they are saying that you have to work on the innovation sector, do more and more technological research and that is how you can work on the small scale industries and create profit out of it. Then we have goal 10 and this says reduce inequality within and among the countries. So reduce inequality by 2030 progressively achieve a sustainable income growth. There should be income growth not for the rich only but for the poor also. Each and every sector of our country should be prospering. So there should all the um, we have to achieve by 2030 we have to progressively achieve sustained income growth of the bottom 40% of the population at a rate at the national average. So not only working on the upper class, you have to work on the bottom 40% also. One Again, a figure that you have to remember. So here we are saying that you are working on the below 40% also, not only the richer sector. By 2030, empower, promote social, economic and political inclusion also. So include the poor in the politics, include them in the social economic activities also. That is when uh, you will see that the digital divide or the disparities or the divide that we have between the rich and the poor would be bridged up, right? Then ensure equal opportunity, reduce inequalities of outcome, including this discriminatory laws or policies or practices. So you have to eliminate all these discriminatory laws, all the policies and all the practices. This is very simple to even remember. Adopt policies, especially some fiscal wage policies and social protection policies so that you can protect the poor also. So have different schemes and you have different banks also for these poor people. Create awareness so that they also know how to use the economic resources properly. Then improve and 
and regularize and monitor all the global financial markets and institutions don't only be skewed at one point of uh, area only even the rural areas should have the awareness about the global financial markets and the institutions then enhance all the recognition that you have for the poor and of course for your country create a good decision making power in the global international economic and financial institutions also so in ensure enhance representation and voice so you should have a good voice and good representations for the developing countries in the decision making power when it comes to the global international level so you should have that power that when you sit at the global level you can take and take part in the decision making policies facilitate orderly safe regular and responsible migration and mobility to people so you should give them opportunity to migrate to visit from one place to another so that they can use their resources and they can receive uh, you know you can use this human resource to the greater extent so what are we we are human resources so we are saying here you you have to use your human resources to the maximum advantage then you have make cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable this is goal number 14 goal number 11 sorry which talks about the cities so they are saying that you have to build inclusive cities so make cities human settlements more inclusive make them more safe more resilient and make them more sustainable by 2030 ensure access for all the adequate safe affordable housing basic services and upgrade the slums also so what they are saying first of all you have to provide adequate safe and affordable living to everyone we should at least have good places to live not only in the urban sector again and not only the uh, basic facility not only the you know uh, the major facilities should not only be focused at but the basic facilities like the sanitation is also very important so basic facilities and upgrade the slum area also don't only work on large colonies building apartments but you should work on the sectors like the slum areas also by 2030 wide access to safe affordable accessible and sustainable transport system now this is what we also discuss in the iii and dcs and we also discuss that you know we are targeting more on electric vehicles and we are also targeting that now we'll use more and more public transport rather than the private transport so that we can protect the uh, resources that we have right so this is what we are saying again we have to use a very safe affordable and accessible strategy so that good transportation system can be there then by 2030 enhance inclusive sustainable urbanization and capacity for participating integration and sustainability for the human settlements again the same thing nothing different in this goal we are just talking that there should be good places to live not only you have to work on the upper section but at the lower section also we'll be focusing on the slum areas on the basic facilities and in the previous goals we have already discussed that how water and sanitation is important but in this goal we are targeting on the transportation the basic facilities in the cities and the other areas then slums adequate safe basic facilities and very inclusive and sustainable area when we talk about the urbanization so what is urbanization a very progressive nature of the cities would be called as urbanization so all the human settlement planning and the developing countries should focus on these kind of managements then we have another target this says that strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's culture and the natural he heritage so what is this that not only you not only protecting and building the new cities and so that you can be urbanized you can become modernized but you have to protect the culture you have to protect the heritage also so you have to protect the given ramsar sites that you have you have to protect the other uh, heritage sites that we have you cannot destroy them to build something new this is also a target then you have to significantly reduce the number of deaths and the number of people affected by the direct economic losses so if you find that there are because of economic losses because of monetary areas and because of monetary issues there is losses and there are number of deaths that are increasing you have to protect it right 
So then we have by 2030 reduce an adverse per capita environmental impact of the cities including the paying special attention on the air quality and the municipal and other waste uh, other waste management. So what is this goal or this target? This target says that yes, you are working on the basic facilities of the cities, you are working on the urbanization, you are working on the heritage, but you have to also look at the transportation and at the basic environmental sector also. What is this environmental impact? There is environmental impact seen in the air quality index. So now we have schemes that, uh, now we have so many schemes that we have for the air pollution because the air pollution in Delhi, take an example of Delhi, is terribly, uh, you know, it is increasing at a lot of faster rate that it was in the previous years. So now the air quality index is very, very poor. So so you should know that there are different schemes that are uh, gov that the government is starting so that the air quality can be improved or even was one of them a very old scheme but a popular scheme then you have to work not only on the air quality but on the waste management sector also so in our classes in the greater detail we have discussed all the colors related to the air quality index we have discussed the bars we have also discussed which color signifies what and what is the basic number when you can say the air is good, when you can say the air is pure or extremely bad. We have also discussed the disposition of the waste in greater detail. We discussed how the slurry is dumped and how different solid waste management is done in the class also. That is very important. Questions are asked. Why? Because it is in your SDG also. So you should know how the water in your homes is clean. So water management is very important. And you should know the solid waste management. So we discuss different area, different sectors like landfills, and we also discuss other areas like the vermicompost pits, and all of these things we discuss. That uh, that thing should be in your uh, at your fingertips, right? Let us move further. So by 2030, you have to provide universal access to safe, inclusive, accessible, green and public spaces. So you have to work on the green areas, the parks. Basically, they are talking about the parks, the gardens that we have. You have to protect them. So you have to give a safe, inclusive environment, a green environment to the public spaces also. Then we have goal 12 and this goal says that you have to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. That means that you have to produce at a good rate so that everyone is correctly fed. So you have to implement the 10 year framework of programs on the sustainable consumption and production patterns. By 2030 achieve sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources. Very important by 2030 half per capita global food waste at the retail and the consumer level and reduce food losses along the production and the supply chains including the post harvest loss. So here we discussed that we have already seen that there are a lot of losses that we uh, actually go through when, it, when we talk about the food. So some food get wasted or there are middlemen that come into play and there is wastage of food when we are talking about the supply chain or after the post -harve uh, harvesting session. So you have to protect these kinds of food wastage. So this is an important target by 2030 half per capita global food wastage at the retail and and consumer levels that is done and you have to reduce you have to safeguard that and you have to reduce the food losses along the production and the supply chain that means in the demand and supply sector somewhere you see that there is hoarding being done there is black marketing being done and you have to protect that and this is happening post harvest by 2020 achieve environmentally sound management of the chemicals and all the waste throughout their life cycle. So hence you have to work on the waste management also by 2020. Then by 2030, sust uh, substantially you have to reduce the waste generation through prevention, reduction and recycling and reusing. That means the three R's become important. They are saying that you have to reduce the waste or either recycle or you have to reuse that waste again and again. Encourage companies, especially large and transnational companies to adopt more sustainable matters, more sustainable practices so that less amount of wastage is done. So we discuss how from big factories there are waste and these waste are dumped in your 
lakes. Now you have to tell me what is this word? This word, you have to write it in the comment section, the definition of this word that is acidification. So we discuss how in lakes and ponds, there are so many chemicals that the factories release and they place and all they, the, they put all these dumps, uh, all these wastage in the water bodies and how the water bodies get affected. So we discuss what is acidification and in the comment section, you have to write uh, the definition of acidification and you have to explain it as well. Then promote public uh, procurement and practices for a more sustainable nature. By 2030, ensure people everywhere have a relevant information and awareness about sustainable development. So basically, what is this goal talking? Let us discuss because it is important. Here they are saying that you have to work and implement a holistic growth. There should be 10 year framework of programs on the sustainable consumption and production patterns. You have to produce it in such a manner that there is less of hoarding. You have to give awareness to the farmers, good quality seeds and all of these things should be incorporated so that good production and consumption is done. Demand and supply is Correct. Then by 2030, you have to achieve that there is a very good sustainable management system and efficient use of all the natural resources that we have. There should be good seeds, production of those seeds, making of oil from those seeds. We also discussed all, all of these things. This becomes so important to protect them. Then we discussed that there are so many wastages and about half per capita global food wastage is being done and you have to protect those half. Right? So you have to protect it and then you have to also reduce the losses that we bear after the post harvest, that is the post harvest loss. When we talk about the supply chains, the hoarding, the middlemen problems and all of these things have to be curbed. By 2030, we have to look at the waste management systems. We have to ask the companies to encourage good policies to protect it and there should be no one who is not aware of what actually is sustainable development. Then we have goal 13 which talks about take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. So this says you have to work on the climatical problems that we are facing, strengthen resilience and adaptive capabilities to climate related hazards, natural disasters in all the countries. Now. Uh, after this COVID scenarios, this all of these things becomes important. There can be different earthquakes that uh, that you know in 2022 we were uh, hit by different earthquakes. There were other natural disasters. So all of these things become important. They can ask all these interdisciplinary questions. So this is your work to read all the newspapers, all the basic clippings that you had if you were following what I said in the classes, and then you should know that what all are the natural disasters that we went through and you should also read more about the natural hazards. You should also know the difference between natural disasters and natural hazards that we discussed in the class, right? So then interdisciplinary questions can be asked. Also in previous question, uh, I think in 2022, they asked the uh, full form of DDMA or maybe they asked uh, when was DDMA, uh, in, when did DDMA came up? So which was the year in which DDMA came and we discussed it in the class also, right? So you should know all of these things. Then integrate climate change measures. You have to take up measures that talk about the climate change. Then improve education, awareness raising and uh, you have to work on the human capability and you have to protect the climate change problems. You have to work on mitigation, adaptation, impact, reduction and you have to start giving early warnings so that less amount of loss is seen. So you have to not only curb the problem or you have to curb the situation that is created after the disaster is created but you have to give them mitigation, you have to protect them and you have to give them adaptation. Then you have to reduce the effect also and you have to give early warnings so that there can be proper awareness of all the disasters and the natural hazards that are going to happen. That means you have to work on all these climatical change situations in a proper manner.
then we have a goal 14 so goal 14 say you have to converse uh, you have to conserve and sub, uh, sustainably use the ocean seas marine resources for the sustainable development now this is life below water so we are talking about life below water we are discussing about the ocean seas and other marine resources so by 2025 you have to prevent significantly reduce the marine pollution of all kinds so you have by 2025 first of all you have to protect the marine pollution that is being happening then by 2020 you have to manage protect the marine and the coastal ecosystem to avoid any significant adverse impacts that we go through so we know that uh, there is ganpati visarjan and there are uh, huge uh, you know uh, statues and huge murtis of ganesh uh, lord ganesha are basically uh, you know dumped in water so this is a practice that was started started as a very spiritual uh, uh, you know a spiritual customs and you have to protect it but you have to do it in such a manner that the marine ecosystem is not disturbed right because all of these salt and silt would deposit and basically you see that the marine life suffers a lot from all of these things so there should be different measures use eco-friendly murtis uh, rather than just making it out of sand because that does not decompose right so then by 2020, you are managing and protecting the marine ecosystem. Then you will minimize and address the impact of the ocean acidification. You have to know what is ocean acidification and how this leaching and ocean acidification can cause a lot of problem. You should also know biomagnification. Then you should know what is algae bloom. All of these things are very, very, very important. You should know about bioaccumulation. These things are often asked in statement wise questions. Then by 2020, effectively regulate harvesting and end the overfishing, illegal and unreported, unregulated fishing should also be reduced. So it is observed that there is a lot of cases whenever we talk about the not so regulated or effective not effectively regulated harvesting so first of all you should have good measures for harvesting good measures to protect the land and the soil also so we discussed how salt can create a lot of problems on our land right so you should re revisit that class uh, in which we discuss water pollution and air pollution that and land pollution all of these things are important then overfishing is also one problem so it is seen that there are practices like illegal fishing overfishing unreported fishing and unregulated fishing so the marine ecosystem suffers a lot if the food and because of this fishing problem and because of this overfishing problem the marine ecosystem is deteriorating and the food chain is also deteriorating so you know that each level of the food chain is so important so because it has to work in a proper manner but if one animal is getting deteriorated or if at one level the food chain is breaking then it would lead to a major loss in the ecosystem so hence you have to protect the fishing activities by 2020 you have to uh, conserve at least 10 percent of the coastal and marine areas here you have to protect 10 percent of the area by 2020 by 2020 you have to prohibit certain forms of fishery uh, fishery subsidies which contribute to over capacity and overfishing. so there is subsidies given so that you can actually do fishing but this is creating a lot of problems like overfishing and this disrupts the ecosystem so you have to prohibit those activities then by 2030 increase the economic benefits to the small islands developing states and at least the developed countries for the sustainable use of marine resources so you have to protect by 2020 not even 30 by 2020 because the this overfishing problem is creating a lot of problem you have to take quick measures and you have to protect the marine eco system then we have protect restore promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem sustainably manage the forest combat desertification what is desertification you have to tell me in the comment section and halt and 
reverse the land degradation and halt the biodiversity loss so first of all you have to see that there is no overcutting of trees no problems like desertification because if over gra over grazing or overcutting of trees is done there would be this would only lead to desertification then you have to promote that all the terrestrial areas are also protected not only we are not only focusing on the marine life but how important it is the flora and the fauna that is living on the land for us because they also contribute in the food chain you have to halt and you have to reverse all the land degradation that is done till now so this zooming agriculture this burning slash and burn agriculture that we discussed in the class also is causing a lot of deterioration this water logging is causing a lot of problems salt that is there in the water and we use this term also in the class that is because of which the uh, land and the uh, plants on the land are actually suffering so you have to work on all of these areas also so by 2020 ensure that you conserve you restore and you sustainably use the terrestrial land and all the inland water fresh water ecosystem should also be protected by 2020 promote implementation of sustainable management of all types of forest work on the forest you have to protect all the types of forest that we have either they are tropical or they are deciduous whatever types of forest you have you have to protect them combat desertification restore degradation of the land and the soil that you are doing and then you have to protect us from, and you have to reverse the land desertification that is being already done by 2030 ensure the conservation of mountain ecosystem including the biodiversity in order to enhance the capacity to provide benefits that are essential for sustainable development so what is this point this point is saying nothing but one thing you not only you're not only protecting the desertification problem or the land but you are also protecting the mountain areas so we also discussed that himalaya is one area that is deteriorating so you have to protect it so this is how you have to protect the mountain ecosystem you have to protect and you have to conserve the land ecosystem you have to combat the desertification you have to give a sustainable use and you have to use the terrestrial ecosystem in a very uh, sustainable manner and then biodiversity loss is should also be recovered and you have to protect the land degradation also then you have to take urgent and significant action to reduce degradation of natural habitats there are natural habitats that are uh, reduce that are being uh, uh, you know deteriorating and you have to protect the different animals who are ex uh, who are basically uh, endangered species so you have to protect all these species and the species that can be extinct really soon then you have to protect all the loss of the biodiversity that is being happening and then by 2020 you have to protect and and prevent the extension of the threatened species so all those species who are threatened who can be extinct in the near future should be protected right so there are different schemes for one horn rhinoceros and all of these things and like we discussed in the class also like how how many schemes there are for different animals so we have uh, for the leopards so for the snow leopards and there is schemes for the elephants how their tusk was being exported and imported so much that they were poaching being done for that then project tiger is there and uh, one horn rhinoceros so all of these animals who are at the verge of being extinct and they are very rare should be protected then you have to promote fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from the utilization of all the, the genetic resources and promote and you have to promote appropriate access to such resources and internationally you have to protect them as well so what is it basically we are saying that you have to utilize all these genetic resources and you have to promote accessibility to all of these things take urgent action end poaching end trafficking and protect the species protect the flora and fauna so you have to protect poaching you have to protect killing hunting and trafficking of all the flora and fauna that we have then we have 16th goal which says that promote peace inclusive societies for the sustainable development provide assess 
to justice to all and build effective accountable inclusive institutions at all levels that means justice sustainable development should be there effective building and accountable inclusive institutions should be there so significantly reduce all forms of violence related to death and uh, death rates everywhere so this is the first target you have to protect everyone from the unwanted deaths that is happening you have to reduce first of all deaths caused by violence then you have to end the abuse exploitation trafficking and all forms of violence that is done in fact torturing of the children trafficking human trafficking is a problem and you have to combat it then promote the rule and the law at the nation and at the international levels to ensure equal access of justice given to everyone so give justice to everyone then we have the last goal and this goal is talking about the global partnership so strengthen the means of implementation and retrieval the global part for the global partnership for sustainable development finance so we are saying that global partnership should be there strengthen the domestic resource mobilization domestic resources should be protected developed countries should implement fully their official development assistance commitments including the commitment by many developed countries to achieve the target of 0.7% of gross national income for the official development assistance to the developing countries so what is basically the target the target is 0.7% of the gross national income i would read again and i would come at this side so you, the developed countries should implement fully their official development assistance commitments that they have given that there would be a good gross national income and what is the target that they have decided the target is 0.7% of gross national income of the official development given by the developing countries mobilize additional financial resources you should work together export import should be there you should mobilize the additional finance uh, resources sources for the developing countries for the multiple sources that are given so this is somewhat that uh, like you should talk about you, and you should have free trade and you should know that when you are at the adverse conditions you should protect the developing countries in mdgs also we discuss how important developed developing and underdeveloped countries are and how important working on the landlocked countries are for us so this is what we are also saying you have to mobilize all the additional resources that you have you have to protect the other countries countries that are developing to give them assistance give assistance to the developing countries if they are suffering from a long term debt problems adopt implement good investment promotion regimes of at least in the developed countries technology enhance the north south 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 triangular regions and international cooperation give more access to each country should give more access to everyone then protect and enhance the science technology innovation and enhance the knowledge sharing power also so don't only limit all these resources to your country but protect the other countries also work share right so you have to work on the science technologies innovation and enhancement also enhance international support for implementing effective targeted capacity building in the developing countries so that there can be sustainable development right so this is what we had so these were all the sdgs we discuss all the 17 sdgs and all the major targets there is no target that is important and is being left here you should again read all of this watch the two videos together pause it take screenshots make your own notes whatever is your strategy just follow it because targets are asked now so in the previous video we discussed very simple two questions now we have again these two questions and now they are related to the targets so this is the question. by the year 2030 sustainable development goal number 7 aims at enhancing the global rate of improvement of energy efficiency by a factor of what so here goal 7 we are talking about the energy efficiency what is the correct answer the correct answer is a that means 2 so we are talking how many factor till what factor you can protect it it is the factor 2 so the sustainable development goal as we all know is basically the blueprint for a better and a more sustainable future so goal 
seven. So by 2030, the Sustainable Development Goal seven aims to provide what chief, reliable, sustainable modern energy given to everyone. The three main concerns are what ensure that everyone has access to energy that is affordable, reliable, and cutting to the edge. Then increase the share of the renewable resources that you are using and to the significant amount. Then double the world rate of energy efficiency improvement additionally you have we see all these seven goals let us see we have no poverty as goal one then we have zero hunger good health well and well-being clean water and sanitation affordable and clean energy this is the goal that we were talking right now decent work and economic growth then we have industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduce inequality, sustainable cities, then communities and then responsible and you should have good consumption and production activities, then climate action, then you have to look at the life below water, life on land, justice and harmony, strong peace, justice and strong institutions and then we have partnership right so we know that two is the correct answer then again one question under the sustainable development goal number 12 sustainable consumption and production this is the goal 12 and 12 talks about sustainable consumption there should be good consumption and production so this says this is one of the target to reduce the per capita food wastage we are talking about the food wastage and I marked this for you as well. So food wastage at the retail and the consumer level by what? At what level we are saying that we have to reduce the food wastage. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is half. So you have to protect half of the global food wastage that is being done. What is the correct answer? It is B that is the correct answer. So we will read from here, sustainable development goals were set in 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly and they were to be achieved by, they are to be achieved by 2030, full title of goal number two, uh, of goal number 12 and this is the target three is what, by 2030, half per capita global food wastage at the retail and the consumer levels and you have to reduce the food losses along the production and the supply chains including the post harvest losses. So what is the another index that we saw? So the food loss index which focuses on the losses from the production to the consumption level should be focused. Food waste index this indicates and this is an indicator is a proposal under the development. So basically what is an indicator? Indicator is how you came to know that you will be working on it. So our basic indicator here is the food loss index. So according to the the food loss index we discovered that there is food wastage and you have to protect half food wastage that is in the per global food according to the per global food wastage so i hope you understood it was very easy you just have to remember all of these goals that we saw all these SDGs and MDGs are important. The time period, the time frame, all of that, that becomes important, which is most important according to me. You cannot leave anything, but goal number four is very important. Goal number seven is very important. One is also important. Of course, important is definitely everything, but questions are asked from these at a lot of, you know, a lot of questions are asked. So you cannot leave any goal, but yes, NEP, because of any. 2020 goal 4 becomes very important right so this is my advice you cannot leave any goal make your own notes and then revise all of this daily because you you should know what all goals are there what is the number of the goals try to learn it using some story so that you can uh, you know revise all of this thing again and again and you can remember it in the class in the paper as well so they ask questions related to the goals related to the targets not the indicators they haven't asked the indicators till now and i just hope they don't ask it so, but you can read it it is also there in the website and you should visit it once right so i hope you like today's class it was full of information and you should pause make your own notes as i said if you have any doubts you can write it in the comment section and i shall surely reply to you thank you